So we keep on tossing the coin, uh, which is fair. So the probability of, a head, of heads and tails is always one of. And we are interested in knowing how many tosses on average, so the expected number of tosses that we need in order to have three heads in a row. And the second question, what is the expected number of tosses that we need in order to have tails, heads, heads. So T-H-H, and in the first case, H-H-H. Now, let's try to think about what can be the state space. So we start from the first question. In the first question, we are interested in this. We want to know what is the expected number of tosses until we reach the situation H, H, H. Okay? Very good. When we start the game, okay, we can be in a situation, let me call it zero, okay, state zero, that can represent actually two possibilities. The first one is that it is time zero, okay? So it means that I have not yet tossed the coin, okay? So I'm starting really from scratch. I'm starting from scratch and that's it. But it can also be the situation in which I'm looking at my sequence and now I'm in the situation T. So I have tails. And from now on, I'm counting how many heads I have so that I have three heads in a row. Okay, so the starting point zero represents both situations. Either I'm actually starting the game or I'm in a point of the game in which I'm in front of a tail, not of a head, because obviously that would be already the first H of the three. T conversely does not belong to the triplet HHH, okay? Then if I have this state, what is the next state I can reach? The second state I can reach is state H. So I have one H. From one H, I can go back to zero because I get a T, or I can go to the next state, which is HH. When I'm in HH, this is interesting because I don't go back to H, but I can go back to T because I have a new T appearing. And then we have what? H, H, H. Okay, so let's try to, let's try to, be, to draw this chain. Remember that zero represents either the beginning of the game or the situation in which I have a T that obviously stops my triplet H, H, H. Okay, so if I'm in zero, what happens? If I'm in zero, I can get an H, and if I get an H, I move to this state here with probability one over two because the coin is fair. But if I'm here, I can also extract a tail. So I can toss the coin and get tails, okay? So what's the probability of tails? If the probability of heads is one half, the probability of tails is one half. So from zero, I can stay in zero with probability one over two. Notice the difference with what we had before. Zero is not absorbing, okay? So I can escape from zero. I can stay in zero because if I have a T and I toss the coin and I get another T, I'm always at time zero. Or if I start the game at time zero and I have nothing, neither H or T and I toss and I get a T, I'm in zero because T also represents uh, that. So zero represents everything which is not an H. If I'm in H, what can I do? I can toss the coin once again, and I can get a double H with probability one off, or I can get a tail, and that, that means that I have to go back to zero. If I am in H, H, what happens? I can toss a, a coin and get an H, so this is even one off, 
but I can also get a tail. So I can have HHT. But if I get HHT, I'm no longer able to get a triplet of H. So it means that I'm jumping back to this. One over two. And then what do I have? If I am in H, 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 the game is over. Because this is what I'm interested in, is in getting three H's, okay? So the fact that I get four, five is not important to me because I'm just interested in three. So H, H, H is for me an absorbing state because my question is, what is the expected number of tosses such that I get three H, okay? So I'm not interested in four, five, 20, one million. I don't care, it's just this. So from zero, I stay in zero with probability one half. I can jump to H with probability one half. From H, I can jump to double H, probability one half. From double H to triple H in probability one half. If I'm triple H, I can stay there with probability one because it's the absorbing state. If I'm double H, I cannot jump back to H, but I will jump back to zero because if I'm jumping back, it means that I got a tail. And if I got a tail, it means that I can no longer get H, 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 I'm in H, H, T, so I'm resetting the game to zero, okay? So this is my, uh, this is my uh, Markov chain. Again, if you want, you can represent this in terms of a matrix in which I have uh, four states. So I have zero, H, 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 the same here, zero, H, 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 and let me write 3H here, okay? And then obviously the probability that if I'm in zero, I stay in zero, it's one over two. The probability that I go to H, it's one over two. I cannot jump immediately to double H, zero, zero. To check that you are doing things correctly, always, for example, look at the sum of the probabilities on the rows. They need to sum to one, okay? so. If they sum to something more than one or less than one, there is something wrong in your chain, okay? You, there is something you are not taking into consideration. If you are in H, the probability that I jump back to zero, it's one over two. The probability that I stay in H is zero and the probability that I go to two H is equal to two, uh, one half, sorry, and zero. If I'm in double H, the probability that I go to zero immediately is one over two. The probability that I go back to H is zero. And the probability that I go to tri triple H is one over two. And here is one, zero, zero, zero. So this will be my transition matrix if I want to give the transition matrix representation, okay? Now, how many tosses I need in order to reach triple H if I'm in triple H? zero, okay? That's why we set mu h, h, h equal to zero. Then for what concerns the other, so for what concerns the other uh, quantities, for mu zero, it is equal to one plus, Remember it's one plus the sum for all the others. So the first one is just given from the formula. From state zero, if I look at my, uh, uh, if I get my um, chain, I can stay in zero with probability one half. I have one half mu zero, okay? Plus one half mu H, because I can go to this. The probability of HH associated to the state HH from zero is zero. So if you want, you can also write that just initially to understand. But you see that obviously that those part disappears. So it's not relevant to us. Uh, then what do I have? I have mu h, from mu h I have one that is always there, so 
always remember that. And I have one over two mu zero plus zero mu h, y zero, because I know that I have to escape h. It's not the, there is no possibility that I stay in h plus one over two mu h h plus zero mu h h h. Now this term disappears, this term disappears. And finally, we have the last one. So we have mu h h one plus the possibility that I jump to mu zero. So it's one over two mu zero plus one over two. If you look here, I have the possibility of jumping to h h h, okay? And the possibility of jumping to all the others are all zero, okay? So allow me to write this. Because the possibility that I jump to h is zero, the possibility that uh, I stay in double h, it is equal to zero. Now, mu h h h is also equal to zero, so I can also delete this. Now, if you solve this, I have that mu zero is equal to 14, mu, one, uh, mu h is equal to uh, 12, mu double h is equal to eight, and mu triple h, we already know that, is equal to zero. So the quantity we are interested in is this. So we want to know what is the expected number of steps to reach 3H in our setting when we start from the beginning or when we start from a T, okay? So we want to start from, from zero and we want to reach that. That means that the expected number of steps that we need is 14, okay? And how do you get this? By solving just this system here, okay? So you just have to solve this system and these are the solutions that you get. Then we have the second question, okay? Now, the second question is similar, but we are no longer interested in HHH, but we want THH. And there is an important difference between the two questions. And it's the following. Now, also here, if you want, I can start from a state zero, which is the situation in which either I'm starting the game from scratch or I'm in front of an H. I want the first, le uh, I want the first letter to be a T. So it now is an H, for me, it's a state zero. The second situation is when I get a T, then I have TH and then I have THH. Okay, so this is my, uh, my state space. Now, what happens if I'm in zero and I toss the coin and I get an H, this happens with probability one half. If I'm in zero and I toss the coin and get a tail, then this is one half. Then what happens? If I'm in T, I can toss the coin and get H, and that this happens with probability one half. But there is also another situation which is interesting, and is I'm in T, and instead of TH, I get TT. But if I get TT, then what happens? This T can later be the T of TH or of another TT. And then also here, I will have TH and TT. And maybe this will be THH or THT, and I, then I have to start again. Okay, so I have all these possibilities. So if I'm in T and I toss a coin, it can be a tail and I stay here with probability one half. 
okay? Because I want the T to be just the first letter. And then what happens? If I am in TH, I can go to THH with probability one half. If I reach these, I stay here with probability one because this is my absorbing state. But if I am in TH, I can also get another T because I can be TH, THH, that would be the stop of the game for me, but it can also be THT. So it means that I have to continue the game. So it means that from this, I can go back to this with probability one over two. So you see that the chain is definitely different because in particular, there is this possibility that we are observing with respect to what we have seen before. So the states, in a sense, are still four. They are not exactly the same. And the fact that I can have a T and the T can happen several times, I have this recurrence for what concerns the state T. So what happens now? I have to solve exactly the same type of equations as before. So I will set mu of P H H equal to zero, because if I'm here, I don't need a single step to, to go to that state. And for all the others, I just have to solve the usual equation. So mu zero, it will be equal to one plus one over two mu zero plus one over two mu t, okay? Then plus zero mu th plus zero mu thh, but I can avoid writing there because I mean, it's obviously equal to zero. Then I have mu t and mu t is equal one plus the possibility that I stay in mu t plus the possibility that I jump to mu th. And then I have mu th, and this is equal to one plus the possibility that I jump back to mu t plus the possibility that I jump to mu thh. If you solve this system, I leave that to you, the solutions that I give you, mu zero equal to eight, mu t equal to four, mu th equal to two, and mu T H H equal to zero. So what we are interested in is the expected number of tosses to get T H H. So it means that we start from zero. And this is the expected number of tosses that we have, okay?